Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. Flying solo this week, my man BQ has some stuff going on. You know, he's the uh, the owner, the operator, the whole big deal at the Impact Lounge. So sometimes his, his, his workload gets a little bit heavy. So don't worry, Impact fans, Cool Factor fans. I'm here to hold us down. And we're going to make sure we have a good show today, all right? So real quick, before we get started, I just need you to do a couple of things for me. Number one, first and foremost, I'm just kidding, I know it's foremost. First and foremost, go ahead and smash that like button real quick so everybody knows that you love this content. Uh, number two, hit the subscribe button so that you get, uh, so that you subscribe to the channel and, and, and you have access to all the great goodies past, present, and future on this channel. And number three, hit that little bell for the notifications so that you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this channel. Now, got a packed show for you, and I'm going to really try to squeeze it all into uh, a a, a little bit of time, but I'm going to hit everything. I'm going to touch on everything. So uh, real quick, I got to say, man, coming off this Knockouts Knockdown pay-per-view, I got to say, Impact, man, hit a home run. I think Impact hit a home run with this Knockouts Knockdown pay-per-view. There was, um, you know, there, there's a wave of all women's shows going on right now in the wrestling world. You know, they did the NWA Empower pay-per-view. Um, you know, WWE's been on a good wave with the women's wrestling for a, for a while now. You could argue, you know, you could argue that it, top to bottom, that they're 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 not doing the most with all the women, but they're featuring a lot of women in the main event scene, and you know that's really positive. But as far as this knockdowns not knockdown knockouts knockdown pay per view or 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 special, um, it was excellent. It was excellent. I gotta say, and uh, I'm just gonna give you what I thought were my big winners coming out of the show. All right, um, coming out of the show, we had a few big winners. Number one. I'm going to say was Savannah Evans. Savannah Evans won the four-way Monsters Ball match with uh, Jordan Grace, uh, Savannah Evans, obviously, um, Kimberly, and Alicia Edwards. Now, I thought this was actually a fun showcase match for Jordan Grace. I was like, you know, get her in there, let her throw some people around, you know, flex her strength, all all the great stuff she can do. Um, But the fact that they chose to put Savannah Evans over in this match that says to me that they have plans of building around her, and I think that's great. I mean, clearly she has, you know, a lot more growing and development to do as far as her character goes, her in-ring work, all of that stuff. But you got to get wins. You got to get wins over people that kind of matter, right? And so getting a win in a match over Jordan Grace um, and, you know, and Kimberly and Alicia, all people that the Impact audience knows – that was a huge notch in the belt for Savannah Evans. So she was my first big winner coming out of this show. My second big winner coming out of this show is Mercedes Martinez. She won the tournament and, you know, she got that big yellow trophy and she's going to be the she's going to be in line for a shot at the Knockouts Championship at some point going forward. So I think that was huge. Um but to me, the biggest winner coming out of this whole show, Tasha Steeles. Tasha Stills made the finals of the tournament. Um, you know, so what was that? Three matches she got to wrestle. She got to cut a good promo backstage. And it's really, really was able to highlight her skills, what she does well. Tasha Stills is a great character. She's a great heel. She's really good at agitating people. If people don't like, you know, the sassy hood girl character, they're going to absolutely hate Tasha Stills. She's an agitator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she, she's real slick with her mouth. You know, <laughs> Tasha Stills, to me, I think is absolutely um, knockouts championship material. And even if she's not, you know, the next knockouts champion, I feel like she's being groomed for that spot. And that's okay, right? Because they say that, you know, the, uh, the money's in the chase, right? So just keep prepping her for that. Keep setting her up in, in, in high profile spots where she can, you know, show her character work get wins over people, and just really highlight the type of talent that she is. Because to me, I, I just think it's only a matter of time before Tasha Steeles is your knockouts champion. 
And and this show was really a showcase for her. It really highlighted her. And again, like I said, even though she didn't win the tie, uh, win the tournament, I think she really showed that she can carry um, carry a show, right? I mean, like she appeared on the show, you know, three times. Um, for counting her, her, her promo before the final match. And, you know, she owns all the scenes that she was in. And, and she got a win over uh, Chelsea Green to get to the finals. And I think that was a huge win because Chelsea Green is somebody who I think that not that Impact has huge plans for. So, um, yeah, to me, Tasha Stills, I thought, was the biggest winner coming out of this show. Another thing that I thought this show... Uh, just really did well. What I thought was amazing was the tag me in promo. Um, if you guys didn't see that, the tag me in promo was um, it was a collection of you know videos that people kind of shot on their own cell phones, but it was like stars from all over the wrestling world. Like the first person you see is I think Chris Jericho. Um, you got to see um, oh my goodness, uh, Lita, Mick Foley. Um, you know there were some there were some uh, there were some some impact talents in there. Um, you know they talked about their own mental health. They talked about you know just the different struggles and you know the basic message was hey you know tag me in for help. And I thought it was a really a really dope video. Um, you know I hope that it hit home with some people and it's the type of thing that that everyone should share. If you look on Impact social media, they share the video and I hope everybody goes out there and shares it because. You know, um, you know, mental health is not something that we talk about regularly, but it should be. It should be because you never know what the person next to you is going through. And um, and yeah, you know, people should know. People should know that that somebody, you know, somebody cares and that they're not alone. Um, you know, I just think back to Daphne. You know, Daphne is actually a running theme throughout this show. And um, the fact that they dedicated it, that de dedicated the show to her. But they didn't do it in an exploitive way. You know, they didn't, um, you know, do something cheesy like just say, hey, we're going to call this the Daphne tournament or something like that. But, you know, they had the 10 bell salute at the beginning of the show with Gail Kim and, uh, and, and, and all the talent in the ring, around the ring. Um, like I said, they, they did the tag me in promo. And I just thought that it was. It was a great way of saying that what happened to her, that we're going to try to learn from it. And, um, and, and that's all you can ask, right? That's all you can ask is when, you know, when, when something tragic happens, right? Like instead of just saying, oh, that's a tragedy and say, no, what, what can we do better? You know, what can we do better going forward? And I think that that's, that's what they did here. So, you know, kudos to impact, um, for, for making this a part of the show. And by the way, if, you know, Gail Kim was the producer of this show, so shout out to Gail Kim. You know, sometimes it takes a woman to insert some, some, some uh, logical thought, insert some, you know, some human compassion into a situation. So that was, I, I thought, an excellent job. Um, we got an announcement on this show that the next inductee into the Hall of Fame is going to be Awesome Kong. So congratulations to Awesome Kong. Obviously, a well-deserved, uh, you know, well, well-deserved honor. She is one of the people that is definitely a pillar of the knockouts division. Um, you know, you could argue that you could say there would be no knockouts division without her, but I mean, it just it wouldn't have been the same. Like that Gail Kim, Awesome Kong dynamic going forward was like the ultimate, you know, kind of David versus Goliath matchup to to start off and. Awesome Kong was so good at her role. She was, you know, this uh, this this juggernaut, right? Like she was just running through all the knockouts, and she seemed unstoppable. And I remember, you know, in my early days watching Impact Wrestling, just thinking about, you know, how 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 dominating Awesome Kong was, and you know, she was absolutely the perfect person uh, for that role. And um, so she she's well deserved to be a Hall of Famer. But I did have a little criticism here, okay? Now, just as I said, I completely admire Awesome Kong's work. And I think she totally, 100% deserves to be inducted into the Impact Hall of Fame. But my only criticism here is 
I feel a little bit that this is piggybacking off of the momentum of her announcing her retirement at the NWA Empower Show. Empower Show. And for the longest time, I think that there's a, a, a knockout that deserved to be a Hall of Famer. And, um, you know, maybe because she's currently an active performer that they, they, they don't want to induct her until after she retires. But I think they're, they're missing, they're missing, they're, they're, they're missing the, the boat here um, by not inducting Madison Rain into the, the Impact Hall of Fame. Um, you know, her career is as impressive as anybody's, honestly. Like, she's spanned every era of this company. You know, uh, every network that this company's been on, um, you know, every shape ring that this company has had, you know what I mean? Every level of production budget that this company has had. Madison Rain has been here through them all. Not And it's not like she's just been stagnant in one spot. Like, look at her different, the evolution of her as a character. You know, she, she came in, she was the, the extra person in the beautiful people. Then she kind of branched out on her own. And, and she's just done such a great job staying relevant and and evolving and um like to the point where you know now she can come and go really as she pleases and she can be relevant at any point she can insert herself into you know main card mid card or title picture at any point in the knockout scene and she's believable she's believable she's threatening to the champion you know she can always present herself as you know uh the cunning veteran um you know Madison Rain, just to me, she, her story, if she ever decides to, you know, sit down and tell her story of her years with this company, I, I mean, it's going to be something that that is is damn near unbelievable, right? I mean, she probably knows where a couple of bodies are hidden. Like, she has been with Impact through it all. And so, um, if there ever was an Impact Wrestling Hall of Famer, if there ever was somebody who can be considered, you know, an Impact lifer, um, well, I mean, she has been in other companies, but like I said, she's just been with Impact so consistently that she's been here through it all. You know what I mean? She's been here through it all. So um, I can totally understand why you would hold off, um, why you would hold off on inducting her while she's still performing. But I just think that, you know, I don't know, man. Sometimes it's good to give people their flowers like while they're still here. Um, Sting was inducted as he was an active performer. You know, Kurt Angle was inducted as he was an active performer. So being an active performer is not necessarily a complete barrier to being um, inducted in the Hall of Fame. And I think Madison Rain more than deserves to be uh, an Impact Hall of Famer. She no doubt will be, probably once she retires. But I just think, you know, and, and this is not to take away anything at all from Awesome Kong because, as I said before, she 100% deserves it. But I just think Madison Rain, you know, um, there's, there's, she's been a Hall of Famer for years. If you wanted to induct her five years ago, nobody could have said anything about it. So, um, yeah, man, I just, you know, I, I don't know how many women have been inducted into the Impact Hall of Fame. I know Gail Kim is. Um, I'm not sure who else. I, I don't know if ODB is. But, um, but yeah, man, Madison Rain. I, I think Madison Rain should have been the pick for, uh, for the Impact Hall of Fame. And I just, you know, I don't, I don't want, uh, I don't want them to mess around and wait till she gets, you know, signed by AEW or something. And, you know, she's not available. Um, just, you know, don't, don't keep missing the boat on somebody who's right there who deserves to be honored. Um, another big piece of news coming out of this show is the announcement that the inspiration is coming to uh, Impact Wrestling. That's going to be uh, Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay. For those of you who watch WWE, you know them as Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, the Iconics. So they're going to be showing up at Bound for Glory. So I think that's actually a really interesting piece of news. I'm interested to see what their presentation is outside of WWE. Um, you know, that'll allow them to be edgier if they want to be, you know, uh, try more things. So... Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, pre presented within the confines of WWE, um, they looked very limited. But again, when you're on WWE TV, you know, as it's been well documented, you are very limited to what Vince McMahon wants you to do, how he sees your character. And if you're somebody who doesn't want to risk 
getting on Vince McMahon's bad side, you do exactly what you're told to do. So if his vision of you is, you know, one particular way, even if you have a great vision that's totally another way, you do what you're told to do if you want to keep working for the biggest wrestling company in the world. So I'm interested, I'm very interested to see what they do outside of the WWE umbrella. Um, and listen, is, is that going to sell some tickets for Bound for Glory? I don't know. But I'm interested to check it out. So that's my big takeaways from Knockouts Knockdown. You know, what did you guys think of my, my, my three big winners? Um, did you guys have your own three big winners coming out? You know, let me know what you guys thought was the big takeaway from the Knockouts Knockdown. All right. Let's see here. This week's episode of Impact. Let's get into this. Uh, let's see. Before tonight's all new Impact on Access TV, the action began on BTI with an exclusive match between Matt Raywald and Laredo Kid. And looks like Laredo Kid got the win over Matthew Raywald. Okay. And now, leading up to Bound for Glory, just 16 nights away. And a mere 48 hours away from the Knockouts Knockdown, which we already talked about, we got this episode of Impact. And the show kicked off with the Bullet Club, Chris Bay, Hikaleo, and El Phantasmo versus Finn Juice and Chris Sabin. Uh, the war between the Bullet Club and Finn Juice continued, this time with the addition of two high-flying, highly skilled athletes in Phantasmo and, Fr and Chris Sabin. Good Brothers we saw watching their match from their hotel room as they prepared to defend the Impact World titles against either the Bullet Club or Finn Juice at Bound for Glory. The Bullet Club began to wear down Finn Juice as they cut off the ring and prevent them from making a tag. Juice counters a vertical suplex from Hic Hikaleo with, uh, oh, he, excuse me, he counters a vertical suplex from Hikaleo to create separation. And Finley tags himself in and quickens the pace by catching Bay mid-air with a backbreaker. Chris Sabin hit a double crossbody to Bay and Phantasmo, followed by a step-up DDT. Sabin, Finley, and Robinson soar through the air with triple dives to the floor. Hikaleo hits a massive choke slam on Sabin for a very close near fall. Hikaleo distracts the referee, allowing Phantasmo to go low on Sabin. Then Bay hits the Art of Finesse for the win. So that was a good... Uh, Good victory for the Bullet Club. I like seeing this uh, Bullet Club, Club group getting some wins. I like the idea that they're positioning Chris Bay as the leader of this group, and they're doing something good with him. So he's getting wins, and they're, they're building this character. This is only going to be good for Chris Bay, not just in impact, but in the eyes of the worldwide wrestling fan, because that Bullet Club brand is huge. All right. Uh, Josh Alexander says that Impact World Champion Chris Saban will find out what's going to happen to him at Bound for Glory when they team up against Ace Austin and Madman Fulton in the main event. Um, their opponents are Bound for Glory, but they're going to be partners tonight. All right. Uh, after making a surprise return last week, Heath is in the ring to address the situation with his longtime friend Rhino. Heath says that he didn't hear from Rhino while he was injured for the past year, and he believes it's because violent by design. Uh, because of what they've done to him. Heath calls out Rhino to get to the bottom of it when Violent by Design interrupts. Eric Young says that Rhino says, says the Rhino that Heath knew is now dead. Young tells Heath to leave the ring or else Heath doesn't leave the ring. He doesn't back down. And then it's a three-on-one beatdown attack from Violent by Design. Uh, Eric Young cracks the Violent by Design flag over Heath's back uh, and Rhino is nowhere to be found. So... What's going on with Rhino? Who knows? All right, backstage we see Gia Miller interviewing Willie Mack ahead of his X Division Championship tournament match next week against Rohit Raju and El Phantasmo. Zicky Dice and Manny Lemons of the Learning Tree barrage onto the set and take credit for Willie Mack and Rich Swan's victory over Brian Myers and VSK. Rich challenges them to a tag team match tonight, but Dice and Lemons later learn that Myers and VSK won't be at ringside. All right, so we got Lady Frost, Brandy Loren, and Kimberly versus Tasha Stills, Savannah Evans, and Mercedes Martinez. We got a preview of what was to come in the Knockouts Knockdown tournament uh, as Mercedes Martinez made her impact in ring debut. Tasha hit Brandy with a running kick for two. Tasha and Savannah employed some quick tags 
to continue the assault in the corner. Brandy began to fight back, creating a little separation with a clothesline. Brandy made the tag to her fellow undead bridesmaid, Kimberly, who got to the attack on, on Tasha. Uh, Tasha and Savannah refused to tag in Mercedes Martinez, so she couldn't get involved. She just jumped in the ring illegally and took out Kimber with a double underhook suplex. Martinez went for the pin, but she wasn't a legal competitor. Instead, Tasha rolled up Kimberly to steal the victory for Martinez. After the match, there was a lot of, you know, back and forth, uh, just a little bit of chatter. You could see a little dissension between um, between uh, Tasha and uh, Mercedes Martinez. That was obviously foreshadowing what would happen in the Knockouts Knockdown Tournament. Uh, after the match, also, Alicia attacked the Undead's bridesmaids with Kendra the Kendo Stick. I didn't know. I This is my first time seeing Kendra. I didn't know Kendra was a thing. But apparently this is her, you know, version of, of Kenny, the kendo stick. And, um, and uh, so this led to backstage, you know, Alicia demanding that she get Kimberly in at Knockouts Knockdown and Gail up the ante and made the monster ball match with Kimberly, Alicia, Savannah Evans, and Jordan Grace. Uh, it was a Knockouts Knockdown, excuse me, it was a monster's ball at Knockouts Knockdown in honor of Daphne because Daphne was known for the hardcore matches while she was in Impact. All right, reigning Knockouts Tag Team Champions Havoc and Rosemary hijacked the latest edition of Tennille Dashwood's All About Me featuring The Influence. This Saturday at Knockouts Knockdown, Decay will defend their titles against Tennille and Dashwood, uh, against Tennille Dashwood and Madison Rain. That turned out to be the main event of the Knockouts Knockdown, which I thought was actually a little odd, but... It made sense to have the tag team match last because after the match was over, they rolled the video that the influence uh, or the inspiration was going to be coming at Bound for Glory. So that made sense. It's like, here's your knockouts champion, and here's a challenger coming that maybe you wouldn't expect. All right. We had Black Tarus versus Steve Macklin versus PD Williams in the X Division title tournament. Uh, lots of back and forth here. Steve Macklin was the winner here. Um, he got the win with the... After PD hit the Canadian Destroyer on Black Tarus, uh, but then, you know, Macklin got PD out of the way and, uh, and, and he hit him with the Mayhem for All to win. All right. So Christopher Daniels backstage tells Christian Cage that he's back in Impact Wrestling to challenge for the world title. So he tells him that eventually he wants that title match and he doesn't care if it's going to be in Impact or on AEW. He wants that title match. Um, after being shut down by Impact, Executive Vice President Scott Demore last week, Swingers Palace is closing for good. Uh, this is actually a really funny segment. You saw them kind of packing up all the stuff backstage, and there was uh, a couple of funny lines in, in there. One person unfolded a, a poster of Dixie Carter, and Johnny Swinger's like, hey, hey, Tony Katane. <laughs> if you guys don't know who that is, she was like this video woman who was in like, uh, she was in like rock videos back in like the 80s. She was like a hot model or whatever. And uh, that's all I know about her. I was a child. Uh, um, they also had a, 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 a big poster of the cover of one of Jeff Jarrett's uh, videos. It was like King of the Mountain, Mountain something or other. And um, and one of the guys says, Hey, did we, um, what did he say? Oh my gosh. He said, did we win that in the bet? And then Johnny Swinger says, no, we won it in a lawsuit, which was a nod to Jeff Jarrett's lawsuit against impact wrestling for the, uh, I think it was the rights to the, um, the GFW tape or something like that. And I've heard the story behind that is that they basically just deleted them not knowing what they were. So that's pretty terrible. All right. We have the learning tree, Zicky Dice and Manny Lemons versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack. I love watching Rich Swan and Willie Mack wrestle, man. These guys are just really good. They got great chemistry together, and individually, they're both really exciting and talented wrestlers. Um, it kind of is weird that after Rich Swan's very nice and long world title run, that he's just back doing tag team wrestling, but whatever. What are you going to do? All right. Zicky and Manny try to gain the early advantage by attacking them before the open bell, but Rich and Willie quickly turn the tide. Rich and Willie hit a double team bulldog on Zicky. Willie squeezes the lemons as he targets Manny's chest in the cup in, in, in the corner. Uh, Rich and Willie make quick work of the learning tree, 
connecting with an elevated neck breaker on Manny to win. Post-match, Brian Myers and VSK blindside Rich and Willie. So this is going to be a feud that we see more of. All right, following Deanna, Deanna Perrazzo's attack on Mickey James at her home last week, Mickey retaliates by attacking Deanna backstage at the Impact Zone. Scott Demore announces that a, a no-contact clause between the two knockouts is now in place. If Mickey puts her hands on Deanna, she will lose her knockouts title opportunity at Bound for Glory. If Deanna puts her hands on Mickey, she'll be stripped of the knockouts championship. Gail Kim says that the both of them will be picking at each other's will be picking each other's opponent in a pick your poison series. This Saturday at Knockouts Knockdown, Deanna will face Mickey's handicapped opponent. Uh, it turned out to be Masha Slamovich. And of course Deanna won. Like she wasn't gonna lose. Give me a break. She hasn't lost to anybody in like two years or something like that. Um all right. So then we got a preview for the knockouts knockdown, which was pretty good. All right, Impact Champion World K, uh, World, Impact World Champion Christian Cage and Josh Alexander took on Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. Gosh, when's the last time Madman Fulton's won a match? You could probably just look at this and figure who won, but let's just see anyway. Okay, Alexander hit Ace with a delayed vertical suplex. Fulton distracts Ace from the apron, allowing Ace to gain the advantage with a super kick. Ace hits a pinpoint buzzsaw kick for two. Cage delivers a series of shots in the corner, followed by a reverse DDT. Fulton gets involved once again, providing Ace with another opportunity to take control. Fulton begins to wear Cage down, then cuts off the ring as Ace hits a super kick. Cage spears Ace mid-air, allowing him to make the tag to Alexander. The speed and momentum are in Alexander's favor as he picks Fulton up on his shoulders and slams him down to the mat. Alexander hits Fulton with one German suplex after the other, but Fulton pulls him into the corner when he's met with a springboard kick from Ace. Cage pushes Ace off the top rope, then sends Fulton crashing into the steel steps. Alexander hits Ace with the Chaos Theory suplex. Cage tags himself into the match and connects with the kill switch to win. Woo! That was a lot. <clears throat> and of course, after the match, you saw Alexander and, and, and Cage kind of you know, facing off, just basically saying, hey, that was, you know, good stuff, but, you know, watch out, I'm coming for you. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the Josh Alexander, um, Christian Cage match. Uh, you know, obviously the, the, the big story that we're looking for here, that we've been looking for for a long time, is who is going to be the one to bring the world title back to impact you know, from the clutches of AEW. Um, and, and you know, if you've been listening to the show, we've been predicting for a while that it was going to be Josh Alexander. Obviously, seeing what's going on now further makes it look like it's going to be Josh Alexander. But all of that to the side, it still looks like this is going to be a really good match. Like, if you've been paying attention to the matches Christian has been having, Christian has been having some good matches. And Josh Alexander has just been absolutely knocking it out the park lately with all of his matches, everything he's been doing. Like, Josh Alexander has been doing some of the best work of anybody in the world of wrestling. Um, just If you just look at the matches that Josh Alexander has been putting in the bank in the last few months, he's going to have to get consideration on every major list as far as, you know, who's, put, who's putting in the best matches of the year. He's going to have to be mentioned because... Uh, uh, again, like just look at the match he had, um, you know, a, a few weeks ago with Jake something, the Iron Man match. Uh, there was another one. There was a multi way match he was in. But Josh Alexander, he is stacking up a resume um, for having one of the best years uh, that anybody has had an impact in a very long time. And if he completes it by winning the title from Christian Cage, which a lot of us think he will. I think it's going to be very interesting to see. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be very, very interesting to see, um, you know, if people are able to deny Josh Alexander uh, as, as you know, as far as just putting him on their list of people who are, you know, um, you know, considered best in the world or, you know, or even people who've had the best year, you know, in, in, in the world. So um, I'm very interested to see, you know, like I said, you know, how, how people are going to be looking at him going forward. But as far as builds go, to me, 
Deanna Perazzo versus Mickey James is the match I am most looking forward to at Bound for Glory. I thought the build has been excellent. Um, you know, Mickey James has more than explained, you know, why this feud is now personal to her. Um, Deanna Perazzo, you know, she continues to be the gold standard in women's wrestling for, you know, everybody outside of WWE. Like, really, she's excellent. I mean, honestly, if I had to say who are the top women's wrestlers in the world right now, I would say, gosh, and, and not just who's the top women's wrestler, but who's who's having like the best year, right? Like to me, you got to go with, and this is in no particular order. You got to go with, you know, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair. Um, you got to go with, uh, obviously, Britt Baker. You got to go with Britt Baker. Um, and you got to go with Deanna Perrazzo, right? Like you, you got to go with Deanna Perrazzo. She's just been, she, she's been absolutely phenomenal. So, um Again, this is another one where when people start having these conversations at the end of the year and start talking about, you know, who put together the best body of work, Deanna Perrazzo is going to have to be mentioned. And if you're not, then you're just like a, an, an impact hater or a fraud because you really just you, you can't deny the body of work she's putting together. So, you know, that, that is what it is. And uh, like I said, to me, this match with Mickey James and Deanna Perrazzo, that's the co-main event of Bound for Glory. That's the co-main event. Um, best build, best performers. I got no doubt in my mind that Mickey James is going to deliver um, a high quality performance. Like, I mean, I, I can't, um, I can't think when's the last time I saw Mickey James do anything other than uh, a, a good match. So, um, you know, I got a hundred percent confidence that this is going to be uh, a match that delivers. It's going to be worthy of having been the main event. So, you know, so we we will see, we will see how that goes. All right. It's time now for the part of the show where we let you guys be a part of the show where we take your questions from the comment section. And let's see. I'm going to take a few here. All right. <clears throat> First one is going to come from Paul Young. Paul Young says, I like the premise of the digital media title. We'll see how it develops. Hopefully better than the 24-7 title in WWE. We can only hope. Uh, on the Forbidden Door. I like the fact that you can have uh, different wrestlers from, well, you can have different wrestlers coming in and enhancing impact talent for short stints, but not too long as they will lose their mystique. On the show itself, I agree that the actual programming each week is generally good to very good, but it could quite easily be improved with different presentation and increase in crowd sizes. Moving the location every other month or something would make great changes. Uh, just as a note, I prefer the hour-ish episodes. Yeah, uh, listen, Paul. First of all, Paul, thank you for your comment. I can't argue with any of that. <clears throat> you know, I actually, I, I, I really agree. I think those are, are great comments. Hold on. I think that all the stuff you said there really... Um, I think it would help improve the show. Um, and as far as the digital media championship goes, I haven't seen any of the matches for the digital media tournament yet. But, you know, like we talk about all the time, you know, Impact has a few wrestlers right now that I think are just really should be the pillars going forward. Like I said, you know, Jake something, um, Trey Miguel, uh, obviously Josh Alexander. Um, you know, there's, there's a few more people who, you know, I have in mind who fall into that category. And listen, if you're adding more titles, then make that an opportunity to put the title on some of these guys who should be your pillars, right? Like you guys been beating Jake something a lot. Maybe have him, you know, get that digital media title and make people start to look at him in a different light. So championships like this are a great opportunity to help people get some shine and I'm interested interested to see what they do with it going forward. Um, thanks for your comments, Paul. All right, let's see. Carol Joseph says, I've enjoyed the Forbidden Door. Uh, it's brought some Impact TNA legends back to Impact. Also renewed work, work, working relationship with uh, New Japan. Yeah, I totally agree. There's been a lot overall when it comes to this Forbidden Door. So here's my take on it overall. I think a lot of people really could not see past the fact that uh, Impact was participating in the lift up Kenny Omega storyline. And, you know, it was what it was. Like, to me, that wasn't something really to be 
you know, to be upset about. Like, you know, like I said, Impact, they traded off to have uh, an attraction lent to them from AEW in exchange for saying, hey, we're just going to make sure that we treat him right and we're going to keep him elevated and nobody's going to going to harm him at all from, from being on our show. And the trade-off was Impact had some of its, you know, highest selling pay-per-views. They had uh, a really high ranking episode of Imp- highly rated episode of Impact. And so, listen, in the numbers game, Impact won. So people can say what they want. You know, the addition of the uh, New Japan talents has really freshened up the show in a lot of spots. And yeah, I mean, this has been really smart. This has been really good for Impact. And I don't think you can deny that this has been good for Impact. You know what I mean? I, like, there's a lot of people who are just, you know, AEW haters, and they're going to hate on anything that AEW does. And, um, but yeah, like, I, I think it'd be really hard to argue at this point that the Forbidden Door as a whole has been good for Impact Wrestling. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, Logan Christensen said, uh, the Forbidden Door as a whole has been really great. I especially enjoy seeing NJPW talent on Impact. As for Digital Media Championship, Digital or Internet Championship would be a better name. Yeah, the name was tough, man. The name was tough. Like, I can't... um, Digital Media Championship sounds really bland, but, again, I think about it, and I'm telling you, man, if this... If this was the AEW Digital Media Championship, people would be like, you know what? I like that. That's 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 innovative. That's new. It says exactly what it is. It, it delivers what it promises. You know what I mean? So I think that the name's not great, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not great. But here's what I, what I don't love is that this belt looks like a tiny version of the AEW Championship. To me, I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Because everybody's going to notice that right away. And you could at least make it a prestigious title if you're going to do that. So, also, like, I don't understand what's the point of making the title if you're not going to make it prestigious anyway. So, um, let's just let's just see. But it looks like, as far as who's been in the tournament so far, that, you know, this isn't going to be something that's going to be sitting high up on the card. It's not going to be in a lot of featured spots. Uh, Logan, thank you for your, for your question. All right. Critical Sting says, I see the Forbidden Door as an overall net positive, especially for Impact. Even with Omega, arguably the biggest star outside of WWE, was on the show for the majority of the year. Knowing that at any moment somebody from AEW, AAA, or New Japan can show up keeps things unpredictable and fresh. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, just knowing that somebody could walk out there at any moment. Yeah, listen. it. You can't deny that that's a good thing. So, yeah. All right, what else we got here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. The best lamest ninety eight says, "How does Wow get on Viacom just like that when Impact had to settle for lesser networks for years?" Um, I think that's very interesting. Also, like we don't know where it's going to be positioned. You know, Viacom owns a lot of networks, a lot of networks. I mean, like if you just want to do a quick Google search for all of the uh, all of the properties that Viacom owns. Like, that could mean anything, right? I mean, like, technically, Destination America was a CBS, which is Viacom, right, network. So, um, so listen, being on Viacom could mean anything. Like, please don't think of that like they're going to be on the national CBS affiliate, you know, in a primetime slot. That could be, you know, being a part of whatever streaming service they have. They could be on CBS Sports Network, like, you know, Viacom owns a lot of properties, so that doesn't necessarily mean that they've been put into a big spot. But, you know, um, I think that to get on a major network, you have to show that you can bring some viewership or you got to have somebody in your corner who can really sell that property. And we don't know, you know, who Viacom has in that. I'm pretty sure at the um, in the pictures I saw, I, I thought I saw Jeannie Buss, if I'm not mistaken, who's the owner of the Lakers. Uh and if that's the, if that's the case, I mean, she's a very powerful person. I'm sure she's well connected. Um, you know, I'm sure that helps get you in some doors. But it, you know, powerful friends or not, you uh, you know, they don't have much of a roster to speak of. You know, and Tessa Blanchard's the biggest name they got, and 
you can't throw that name out into the air with get without getting back some real funky smells. So I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I'd be surprised if they got some really major distribution. So let's just let's pump our brakes on that. But thank you for your question. All right, let's see. In Baldwin forty five says the Good Brothers are a walking example of that. Don't tell me you're special. Show me you're special. Uh, those guys have uh, have slept walked their way through Impact since they arrived. They wouldn't even crack the top five best teams in AEW for me. Um, I mean, I don't know about the best five teams in AEW, but I, I can say, yeah, I mean, like, you know, you got to, yeah, again, you got you to gotta show it. You got to show it. Like, you know, again, if I'm someone who watches New Japan and I know your shtick from New Japan, then cool. But if I'm not, and I'm not, then you got to show it to me. You know what I mean? You got you to gotta show me what it is that makes you special. And I just have yet to see that from, from the Good Brothers. All right. Let's see. Bland Skies 28 says, I think when it comes to creating new stars, the problem is the last few stars they created left like Brian Cage and Tessa. So with Josh becoming a free agent early next year, what is the point in promoting him as the face of Impact? So I didn't know that Josh Alexander was becoming a free agent early next year. But if that's true, it really follows the, the the pattern that they've been setting. And I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. I mean, it, do you just forget to push somebody until their deal's coming up? Or is it or is the plan to try and uh you know to, to try and have someone, you know, drop the title as they leave? Like maybe that's it. Maybe, you know, Impact has just really embraced the concept of being a developmental promotion. And the idea is you're going to get here, you're going to develop, you're going to get to the top, and then you're going to get your big deal to go somewhere else, and you'll drop your title on the way out the door. And if that's the case, then, you know, it works, right? It works I, it, if, if that's the case. But I think, you know, sometimes this is where the interest of the fan and the interest of the company sometimes conflict. Because we as fans all want impact to grow and to have bigger audiences and higher production value and get on a bigger network and all of that stuff. But how do we know that's what Impact wants? You know what I mean? How do we know that's what Scott Demore wants? You know, I mean, like, what what interviews is he saying that I really want to grow this promotion and have exclusive talent and, you know, play bigger buildings and all that stuff? We're not hearing any of that stuff, so we don't know that that's what he wants. So maybe it is. You know, maybe it is, but I, I just, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. It does, they, they don't seem to be doing anything to aggressively grow. So we'll see what comes next from, from that perspective. Thank you for your question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Silver Jackson says, in case y'all or anyone else didn't know, Rick Swain, I think you said, I think he meant Rich Swan, uh, is married to Sue Young in real life, which makes me think, why not do a storyline with Rick Swain, Rich Swan, or at least repackage him? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, that's interesting. Uh, from a storyline perspective, I can't see any way that Rich and Sue cross over. Um, there'll be some real reaching going on there, but it could be fun if they actually do it, you know? So uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, Lord knows Sue Young or the person that plays Sue Young, she's so shown, you know, the ability to do anything. You know, she's phenomenal, right? She's absolutely phenomenal. So I wouldn't be shocked if they were to find some way to get them two together. Uh, it, it could be interesting. But I think what you don't want to do is you don't want to, you know, much like BQ always talked about with Alicia, like you don't want her to get pigeonholed as being Rich's wife, right? Like you want her to, have her own character and be able to stand on her own. So, um, you know, separate is good. You know, separate is good. They're both doing good on their own. So, you know, why mess up a good thing? All right, let's see. A Dirk says, I'm interested to see who shows up at BFG and also how this digital media title will play along at BFG 
since it will be a six-way match, but also we will have 20 male or female gauntlet match. I don't think those same six wrestlers will be in the in the gauntlet match, and my guess is that the crowning of the new champ will take place on the pre-show live on all their media platforms, uh, or yeah, live on the, on on all their media platforms, which is not a bad idea since it represents exactly that. I think if Impact was to develop a video game title that would fit well on the platform too, in regard to the Forbidden Door. I think Impact needs to test the waters with other promotions such as MLW, ROH, NAA, NWA, and AAA on a deeper deeper scale. I think it's time for them to part ways with AEW since it just feels for the past year it's been a one-sided deal. All right, thank you for your comment, A. Dirk. Um, yeah, you know, AEW has really not given much to Impact in terms of, you know, letting their people come on here and 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 you know, be in competitive matches. They've only done that with people who are Impact Originals, right? And so it's been no big deal. But they have been protective over, like, any AEW people. They're not letting them come to Impact and lose. They're not not letting any Impact people come on AEW and win. It is what it is. Um, Let's see what else we got here. Let's see. I'll take one more. Looking for a good question to, to end on. Let's see. Uh, Okesh39 says, what's BQ's Twitter username? Come on. Come on. We give it out here every week. Every week we give it out. Let me just look it up for you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just look up BQ on Twitter. I think it's at BQ Speaks. Let me just... Let me look it up here. I know I have it here. Uh, BQ. Let's see. Let me open up my my Twitter feed here. I'm not going to end on this question, by the way. That was that'd be kind of a a cheap way to end. Let's see. All right, this isn't loading, but um, you just search search Impact, search BQ, search Impact Lounge. Or uh, search uh, search uh, at Talking About Pod. Follow that pod. It's a really good, really good page, and uh, you'll find you'll find BQ in there eventually. All right, let's see. Here we go. In Baldwin Forty Five says, if there's one woman in Impact who should be doing intergender matches, it's Jordan Grace. She's a hell of a worker, and she's strong, strong enough to move guys around to where she needs them, as Cornette says. She just won several powerlifting championships and benched 255 for the first time. It'd be great to see her turn heel and work with some of the smaller baby faces overpowering them, but also keeping up with their speed and cardio. Uh, the fans like her, but I never thought she was any great shakes as a babyface promo. As an arrogant, bullying heel, though, could be great. Um, I actually agree with you on that. You know, I think that. Jordan Grace is really great in the ring. You know, she wrestles really good matches. But the character, I think, kind of needs some work. And probably the easiest way to go is to be a heel, right? We just come in and just be mean to people, push people around. You know, it's tough to be a babyface, just come out and smile and and, and all that stuff and still expect people to like you and care about you. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I I think that right now what they're doing with Jordan Grace is they're really slow playing um, a heel turn with her. She's going to heel turn on Rachel Ellering. Um, they've appeared to go backwards to really heavily being into the tag team thing with them. But I think it's okay because I think Rachel Ellering still, you know, needs more work and still needs more development and, you know, help build up Rachel a little more. So then she can have a big feud with Jordan that will kind of launch Rachel as a singles competitor as well. So I think that's kind of where they're going with Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace is absolutely phenomenal and she would be a great hill and she will be a great hill once they decide to make that move. All right, guys, uh, I think that is, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just got a question here that I cannot 
Dick, look, 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 not, look away. <laughs> um, Big Jet Sexy says, do you think Impact Wrestling should bring back Jeff Jarrett and others to help build up Impact behind the scenes? That's for the Forbidden Doors. That's for the Forbidden Doors? I could take it or leave it uh, the way Lady Frost. Blah, 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 blah. All right. To the Jeff Jarrett question. Hell no. I mean, look, no, listen, Jeff Jarrett is good at a lot of things. Jeff Jarrett was really good at um, at, at creating a buzz. Uh, and, and he's really good at, you know, politicking because he always seems to end up in, like, a position of power, right? That said, how many times are you going to go back to the same well? You know what I mean? How many times are you going to go back to the same well? Um, for all the things that Jeff Jarrett is good at, you can find other people who are good at them, too. And for whatever reason, you know, Jeff Jarrett just does not play well in this particular sandbox. So, hell no. I would not bring back Jeff Jarrett. Uh, Jeff Jarrett comes with baggage. Jeff Jarrett comes with cronyism. And, um, you know, he comes with some good stuff, too. Right? Like, like again, he's, he's an excellent promoter. He's excellent at creating buzz for the show. And I think those things are great. But I just would hold off. I'd hold off. I, I, you know what I mean? I, I, I'd hold off. Because like I said, I think that the good stuff he brings also comes with a little bit of chaos. It has shown to come with a little bit of chaos. And at this point, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know that Impact can really afford very much of, very much of that chaos. All right. That's all I got. That's my show for, for, for this week. A little shorter than you might be used to. But, um, you know, hope you still was able to get you through a few minutes of your day. I'm glad. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, no matter how you are watching this, you know, whether it's on YouTube or on podcast or on SoundCloud or wherever, you know, share it with somebody else. If you got somebody who you know who's a wrestling friend, just go ahead and, uh, you know, send them this via direct message or email or post it on their page. Go ahead and make sure you drop a comment beneath this video to let me know exactly what you think. If you got any questions, drop your name and where you're from so I can shout you out. And, um, you know, most importantly, you know, tell somebody who you know who uh, would love this podcast or somebody who you think would hate this podcast and they just want to tell us how stupid we sound. All right? Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. For the Impact Lounge, for BQ, I'm TW. Peace.